This is Michael. So I guess we'll just let you go ahead and, and uh, have at it. Okay, great. Well, you know, thanks again for letting us um, giving our office the opportunity to speak with you guys today. I know you guys have quite a busy schedule. Um, the congressman wanted me to emphasize that it's our goal to be the most responsive congressional office that uh, in, in the current Congress, and so we want to make sure that you guys are constantly feeling that you know we can answer your question, but also we want to hear your input as much as possible. Uh, and to that effect. Um, uh, you guys have my email, but I would definitely encourage you to use that at any point in time with any questions you have. Um, I also want to emphasize that our offices, both in uh, Washington, D.C., and our three main offices, are open for everybody to contact us, and we encourage the public to do that as well. Um, I, I want to focus on two main things at the moment. There's two things, I think, one which is quite well known about in trade policy going on right now, and the other one which is a little bit less well known, but I think it's equally important to Mainers. Um, the first is obviously that the Congress did pass Trade Promotion Authority, which um, has been an acronym TTA. Uh, this passed a few months ago without the Congressman's support. And I want to discuss that a little bit. The Congressman's views are that, you know, his, his job is to make sure that Maine has the best job environment, at least from the Washington perspective possible. When you come down to our office in Washington, the thing you see on the wall is jobs, jobs, jobs. He has a whiteboard, he talks about it to everybody. And he was concerned that making it easier for the president to ratify for a trade deal would have had negative impact on good paying many jobs. Um, so obviously it's been heavily litigated. We did not win that fight, unfortunately, though we, we came within a few votes to victory. Um, the other fights that we're fighting are, and you know, once that, once uh, we expect some time in, we were originally expecting some time in September for President Obama to present us with the trans Partnership, which is with the um, most of the countries, or most of the grim countries in East Asia, as well as Chile, Australia, and New Zealand, and Canada. Um, it doesn't seem like that's going forward. The rumors um, that indicate that it might be the result of um, dairy concerns. The United States is trying to, you know, um, expand our dairy market, but we're getting some resistance from the other dairy producing countries, including Canada. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know is that trade policy, and this one that trade is a relatively new issue for me. I, I handled uh, financial services in the last Congress for a congressman from New Jersey. And what's interesting about trade is that how much of it goes on behind the scenes and how much of the policy affects regular people in rooms that they're not aware of. All the time, and this became really interesting to me during the recent case with the Madison Paper case, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. But the congressman wanted to make sure that people outside of Maine were also familiar with it, so he was being his from. Um, basically, what happened was that two Canadian companies, one in Port Hawkesbury, received provincial subsidies, which then put, which would allow them to subsidize their paper and outcompete. On illegally out compete, I should say, American paper mills. The large, the most prominent one was in Madison, which makes super talented paper. Um, again, you will not see this, this um, case on the front page of the New York Times, or Wall Street Journal, or Washington Post, but it's, it's something that affected potentially 220 American jobs right there in Madison, Maine, um, one of the towns that really heavily relies on the paper mill and who. Employees are treated very well, have good, um, good union paying salaries, and jobs that we should want to keep here in the United States, and particularly in the state of Maine. Um, and the congressman, mm -hmm. um, the second, we found out about this, I think our second or third week in office, and the congressman immediately jumps forward. He wrote letters to the International Trade Administration, which is in charge of litigating the case. He sought meetings with all the correct people at the International Trade Commission, the International Trade Agency. Uh, sorry, yes, the administration, et cetera, to ensure this case was dealt with in the most proper ma uh, manner possible. Originally, there was some indication that it might not be, um, and that the ICA themselves said they were underfunded. Uh, the congressman went to the House floor during the appropriation season. He asked for money to be reallocated towards the International Trade um, Administration to ensure they enough money to investigate this case. And I'm happy to report that our preliminary reading. Um, the IK announced they were putting a double digit tariff on the legally subsidized Canadian paper when it hits the United States border. October 22nd, we'll have the final determination, and the congressman is leading a bipartisan effort to, um, 
to um, ensure that those tariffs stay on and they're stayed on as in the appropriate manner as possible. Again, we're doing everything. When the congressman talks about jobs for him, it's bipartisan. It's not just things that politicians should do with each other. It's engaging with, with union leadership, with management, with state legislators, with the governor, and with anyone who has a good idea to come forward. And that's what we've done with this case. We've engaged with the IPA, we've engaged with um, the commissioner of the ICC, we've engaged with the um, management of the union, and that's what we're going to continue going forward. Um, we have a few of the other trade cases which are potentially coming forward. Um, we're monitoring those, uh, and we're going to be you know, fighting as hard as we can for every main job possible. And you know, I'm happy to answer any questions about any of this or any of the things going forward. Um, we also have TPP to come for vote in this Congress. Less likely than still possible, uh, TTIP, the uh, Transatlantic Trade Investment Partnership, as well as the um, potential trade and service agreement. And um, I want to let you know the congressman really fled the TPP though. We, or the TPA though, we had, so I, I met with, I was talking the other day, probably about 150 different stakeholders the whole time met with the congressman and myself, from unions to management to various state legislators with, weighed in, and we're going to want the same process, same involved process on all those going forward. We want to hear from anybody, regardless of whether they normally agree with them or not. And I hope we can keep this dialogue going, and I hope this um, meeting here can be the beginning of that dialogue. Thank you very much. One one question I have is, is do you know whether he ever sleeps? <laughs> uh, sorry? <laughs> do you know whether he ever sleeps, <laughs> Representative Paul uh, Well. I, I don't know. I, I'll tell you this. I didn't drink coffee until I started working with the congressman. Yeah, and yeah. He is a ball of energy. Like really yeah, he does a great job for me. So, and and it's it's amazing the impact he's had in such a short time. Very impressive. Yeah. Um, anyone else interested in in commenting or asking questions? Uh, Sharon Tree. Um, thank you, and thank you very much for your presentation, uh, Mr. Sinecor. Um I. Had a couple of questions related to the um, TPP. Um, one of the issues that's really important for Maine, and I know that the um, congressman is well aware of this, is the um, issue of what the tariffs might be on um, footwear and the implications for uh, the jobs here in Maine if those tariffs are reduced um, a lot, because of course then it will make um, shoes from Vietnam and other places much. Um, cheaper. So I wondered if you've heard anything, as you pointed out, uh, so much is behind closed doors, you know, we don't really know what's going on, but I, I wondered if you've uh, got any inside info anyway uh, that might relate to that. Oh, and that's a great question. And as, as, as you imagine, that's an issue we're following very closely. Congressman went to um, See the new balance factory in North Block. I, I, was, I had the opportunity to see it in March and see that this amazing process that would be work with make these uh, shoes, which is it's incredible, and it's, we're, we're so happy to have those jobs. Um, what we've heard is that originally um, the tariff was going to be a step down tariff, starting you know basically over to a 12 to 14 year period, go down you know evenly over that time period, and a more recent rumor, and as the bigger rumor I to confirm them 100 is that we may have to do an immediate drop down or close to immediate drop down and that's obviously something that the congressman would be very very concerned about um, because we i don't know how we compete the congressman's not sure how we're going to compete against vietnam when, when the wages are so much left over there and we'd like the obviously tariffs going down slow would be better um and maybe give them time to figure out, uh, you know, the amount of time to figure out how to compete, but we're still not, we still have some severe concerns with anything, um, no matter what these sort of tariff reductions. Can I ask a follow-up? Sure, follow-up? Well, sort of a follow-up, sure. except it's actually on a different topic, but related to the TPP. Um, one of the issues that I understand in, uh, is also tying things up. I mean, I, I've heard dairy, I've heard um, auto tariffs, and sort of what is considered made in America. Uh, you know, there's a proposal to actually reduce the, the amount um, there, and that's, that might be a, a big issue for many people who work in the auto and auto parts industry. But a third issue is how the TPP might affect drug prices. And um, 
that's in two ways. One, having to do with the rules around how long it takes before something is allowed to go generic. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, the longer that a company has a monopoly, then the longer they can charge any price, like for example, that guy calling himself Pharma Bro, who <laughs> decided to you know, uh, start charging 5,000% more you know, once he bought the company, because we don't have uh, restrictions on that. Um, so that's one of the big issues. And then another part of it was um, provisions that would make it more difficult for countries, including the United States, to put some restrictions on uh, how high prices can go on, on some, of, some of these products. I was wondering whether that's an issue that the Congressman is a, aware of. Secondly, whether he has taken any positions on that. And thirdly, if he's aware of the uh, materials that the commission has actually um, put together over the years uh, around that issue. Uh, because if he isn't, um, I, I think that's something that we could get to the congressman because the commission over the years has actually com uh, commissioned studies of this particular issue and um, has written a lot of letters to the US Trade Representative and others around it. And uh, you know, I didn't know if the congressman was aware of those and you know, would share uh, the concern that has been expressed by the commission in the past about some of the proposals that are being actually really pushed more by the United States than any of the other countries in the uh, GPP. Right, and I have to tell, I haven't spoken about when it comes to drug issues, I haven't spoken to that specifically, but given um, uh, the mayor has a pretty senior district, that's something we're definitely going to want to monitoring, and I would definitely welcome any of the materials that uh, you guys produced on that. I mean, if they're on the website, um, I'm happy to, you know, receive those and examine them. I know the Congress can work as well. Um, what tangentially I would say, and I think you alluded to a little bit, um, Sam, is that there is a, you know, there is a concern about some sovereignty here, right? Whether the United States gets to set its own law, um, and that's something that we definitely want to protect. We, we would definitely be protected in any potential trade agreement. Um, we dealt with this a little bit in Washington when it comes to country of origin labeling. Um, as, as shortly after the year 2000, the United States passed laws that required that for beef to be, you know, beef to be labeled by its country of origin. And there were definitions on what it meant to be raised and grown in the United States versus maybe born in Mexico, raised in the United States. And they're very, very specific definitions. And we lost a lawsuit uh, from Canada and Mexico on that. And as a result, we are being threatened with tariff action unless we remove that law. Um, a bill came forward in Congress to remove country of origin labeling, but the Congressman decided that one, sovereignty was important to him, and two, that um, he wanted to know, he wanted as a single father, you know, raising a child for a single father to open his son's child, but to actually know what food was in his son's mouth. And I think most parents would agree with that decision. Um, we 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 see most people agree with that, and that 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 I think that goes a little bit of sovereignty concern. You're alluding to a little bit there. I'm not sure I answered that question the way you like me to. So. No, I, I don't want you to answer it any way except the way that, that you want to answer it. But I think that's absolutely right. And um, we before uh, you came on uh, getting your presentation today, we talked a little bit about the transatlantic, which is you know not as close to completion. But there's some major sovereignty issues there, and I just did a report uh, relating to that. And if, if you don't mind, I might ship that off to you I via email. It. I <laughs> sent it. I sent it to. Oh, you oh. did. Yeah, yeah. because I, I think there there might be some things there that if, if the congressman is concerned about sovereignty, um, it, it would be a wake up call about what might be happening in the TTIP. Well, I'll, I'll read that very carefully. Um, you know, that is fascinating. Maybe. <laughs> Any anyone else have questions? Christy, why don't you introduce yourself to him? Certainly. Uh, I'm Christy Daggett. Uh, I'm with the Aristic County Action Program. <coughs> Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Sinecor. Um, as you probably know, sawmills, both small and large, are pretty central to our, to our workforce, and those remain really, really good jobs in Aristic County. So just generally, I thank the Congressman for his advocacy on behalf of Madison Paper. Um, but my question is, it seemed like 
currency manipulation was receiving a lot of attention this spring, and then it sort of flagged and fell off at least my personal radar watching what's going on at the federal level. But as our economy improves and our housing market improves, I'm worried that low-wage countries, not just Canada, not Canada, but low-wage countries like Brazil and uh, China will kind of target our mills and build their economic recovery off ours. So I wonder if currency manipulation is on the congressman's radar and if he plans, it's what not, he plans it to do about it. It absolutely is, and you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's something that we've been, you know, that was one of our concerns with the CPA was that there was some mild currency language in there, but it wasn't really strong enough for us, um, for the congressman. And also is that this is, if, if there is a currency problem, that other country starts attacking us with, we stand ready to go in front of the International Trade Commission and ask for relief where appropriate. Because uh, there is obviously legitimate monetary policy, which the federal you know, is supposed to be doing, and obviously it's a controversial whether they do that or not. But um, And then there is blatant attempts to devalue a currency, which is not fair. And um, so our last has written a flood about this. Um, with the former Reagan advisor, I know there's been a few other economists that Brookings have written about this extensively and this is definitely on his radar. It's definitely something that we want to make sure is, is uh, available. You know, we want to make sure that we have the tools necessary in the United States to fight against that and to ensure that our mills and our lumber industry and even eventually the lobster industry are protected and the are protected against um, current manipulators. Um, from other countries. Because the U.S. obeys the rules and we feel that if you want to trade with the United States, other countries should obey the rules as well. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Any other questions? Could I uh, ask one? Lock, sure. Um, this is Locke Kiermaier, staff for the CTPC. I wondered um, if the congressman uh, or if you could speak to any issue, uh, the congressman's position around um, investor state dispute settlement resolution, that mechanism, and what form, and should it be included um, in either the TTIP or the TPP? Right, that's, a, that's quite a limited uh, question, obviously, uh, uh, but let me see I can handle the answer. We, we want to make sure that the United States has the ability to when another country breaks the rule, to ensure that we can um, we can go after that in, in a way possible. The U.S. we have a mechanism to the International Trade Commission, um, and we want to make sure that you know we're, that we're doing that properly. I think one of the concerns that comes up becomes things like we saw with country of origin labeling, where a country basically tries to sue us over. You know, they already had a great three days block on Canadian and Mexican beef because we said we don't want to be labeled. Um, now, I think an objective person can say that the American consumer is going to make their own decision on whether they want to buy Mexican or Canadian beef on their own. Um, and that some Americans don't aren't going to mind buying beef from Canada, some are. And so for the Americans who don't mind, they're not going to see. Can't you know, beef grown in Canada is necessarily a um, as an input as a problem. Unfortunately, the internet, unfortunately, the um, World Trade Organization saw it differently, and that so that's something we definitely need to make sure that we have rules in place that that you, legitimate United States regulation, legitimate United States um, labeling rules, etc., are not subject to foreign government, foreign or international organization. Too, so that would bring down, you know, our legitimate interests of state to make sure our consumers know what they're consuming. Um, so that's something we definitely need to look a little bit more into, and I, I haven't really seen many good answers from that from the administration yet, but we're hopeful. And, you know, we welcome any opportunity to work with President Obama, the United States Trade Representative Froman, in order to try to solve these sorts of situations. Um, but it is a concern of ours. And the idea of that is that in the United States, when foreign companies come here, they're actually afforded the same rights as American companies. They have the right to, they have the right to counsel, they have the right to the same defense, they have the right to access the same markets as we do. So we do treat foreign companies probably better than most other kinds of companies. That's it. Well, could I follow up? Sure. Um, sure. Interestingly enough, um, 
one of the things that I regularly do for the commission is um, something we call articles of interest. And I compile a whole series of articles, pro or con, regarding different free trade agreement issues. And uh, one of the, I haven't discussed this yet with the commission, but in today's um, articles of interest, um, there's an article regarding that the European Union is proposing basically a substitute for ISDS that they would call the uh, Transatlantic Court for Trade Disputes. And uh, some of the features of that proposal, though it's only a proposal at this point, um, include that it would be modeled on the International Court of Justice in The Hague, would feature the appointment of permanent judges, the use of an appeal system, and other details that I was able to find was that this court would be comprised of five judges from the US, the EU, or other countries. Cases would be heard by a panel of three judges representing the US and the EU. All court proceedings would be open to the public, and case documents would be posted online. All of which, if I could say just factually, is contrary to the way that ISDS works right now. So I was mm -hmm. wondering if, if that might be something that you could get back to the commission on, um, how the congressman might regard that kind of proposal in contrast right. to the ISDS. Sure. I mean, I think we're always looking for ways to improve the ISDS, and I'm happy to take that to and find out how he feels about that. Um, absolutely. Well, um, all, of, all of the articles that um, I'll be presenting, including the ones I just referenced, um, will be online um, within a few days on the CTPC website. So you'll be able Great. to see that article yourself. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Well, Mr. Sunakor, you're welcome to stay on the phone and, and listen as we go through the other articles of interest, or you're welcome to get back to work. So, um, I mean, this, okay. is, this is work too, but it's, it's your choice. We're going to turn it over to Locke to go over um, the articles he's compiled. Great. I'll stay on for as long as I can. Um, okay. uh, you know, the public in town, so my work kind of got shifted around a little bit, so I'll stay on as long as I can, because I do find you know, the work you guys are doing very interesting and very helpful. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, and uh, we'll just turn this back over to Locke. Okay.